breathe, it's all gonna be okay. For a moment, forget about everything. The dishes you have to do, that assignment that's due tomorrow, all the things your boss is asking of you, the fact that your house is a mess, the trip you're going on next week, that game you wanna download, that movie you wanna watch, it's poof, it's all gone from your brain as of right now. In this video, we are going to figure out exactly what you actually need to do and discard the rest for now. And then we will slowly ramp up our ability to handle that tornado of chaos that has been wreaking havoc on our lives with a new sense of calm and confidence. And we're gonna do it all using Occiflow, who is also sponsoring today's video. So if you're ready to take back control of your life and you're willing to trust the process, let's get started. So for this video, I wanted to show you what the app looks like as a blank canvas and how I would use it if I was really just dealing with a lot of overload in my life and wanted to start from scratch. I did previously do a tutorial and a breakdown on a lot of the features and workflows and how I use Occiflow. I'll make sure to link that down in the description below if you wanna check that out after. This is what Occiflow looks like when you first open it if you were to have a new account. And what I'm first gonna do is use one of Occiflow's key features, which is their integrations. I just go up to the corner, click on my little profile and click on integrations. You can see there's a lot of native integrations they've already added. So personally, I use it with my Notion and my Google Calendar. If you use Outlook, Slack, Teams, Zoom, Asana, there's plenty of ways you can integrate this. But the first step is just going to be to add our calendars. So if you use Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, anything, just click on it. You're gonna say connect. And then after you go through the whole login, song and dance, you're gonna be able to see all of your calendars listed from Google. So that's step one. If there's any other calendars you wanna add, do that as well. The only one I use is Google Calendar. Now, if I go back, you can see that all of my calendar events have been added here. And if there's anything else that's missing, you can just manually add it by clicking and dragging and saying lunch with friend. Now the key here is we're actually just populating this with events and deadlines. And when I say deadlines, I mean real deadlines. So there's a difference between a hard deadline and a soft deadline. Hard deadlines are things that are outside of your control to move. So that could be like a friend's wedding, tax season deadlines, a concert. These aren't dates that you necessarily are planning to abide by, but it's just here for a reference. And what we don't wanna do is put soft deadlines here. So soft deadlines are anything that you feel you should or you want to do by a certain date, it's things that are inside your control. And it can be hard to differentiate this sometimes. Even though I try to upload a video a week and I consider that my job, I could technically not upload it on you know Friday or whenever I plan to. I could skip the week, I could upload it a day early. So that would not be an example of a hard deadline, even though it is something critical that I wanna do. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is import any tasks we have from other apps. So again, I use Notion. I'm gonna go back up here to my integrations panel and click on Notion and once that has been connected, I can add a specific database that I want it to pull from, which is gonna be my task database, obviously. So I click on task database. I don't assign my task to anyone other than myself, so I'm just gonna say all pages. And I'm gonna add a custom filter because I don't want every task to be in here. The ones that I have are under status is ready to start. So these are all my tasks that I can actually do right now. But then you go down here and you can say that the done state is status done and then if i click undone i want the status to go back to ready to start and i want you to leave the schedule date and deadline dates alone right now even if you have those as part of you know your notion your asana trello whatever it is that you're importing from again any deadline that is absolutely critical we've already put into our calendar we don't want to potentially import soft deadlines that are going to just clog our brain. So I'm going to say save changes. Yes, start syncing. Okay, now if we go back to our main page and you click over here on inbox, which is where I am right now, you can see a list of all the tasks that have been imported from my Notion. And you can tell by this little Notion icon. They're all showing up here because again, we didn't put any due dates, any scheduled dates. This is just a list of all of our tasks that have yet to be planned. And now I want you to go look at your calendar right here and see if there's any other tasks that just off the top of your head, you're thinking of that would be nice to get done. So let's say I have a trip coming up. I said I need to pack for the trip and follow up with Marriott about a room upgrade. Are there any other things that I would like to add for this? Give friend key to water plants, download movies, research restaurants. 
So don't overthink this, just time box yourself to maybe five, 10 minutes, list out everything you can think of. Again, import everything that's already been there. Have it all on this list so you can see all the things that you're supposed to do or you told yourself you were gonna do. We're not gonna say that you're supposed to do them. Now this next step is not easy, but I believe in you. We're gonna go through our list of tasks, whether that's you know five, 500, however many you have here. And I want you to pick seven, just seven. And the way I want you to choose these is by what is the highest priority. And you might be used to prioritizing with like an Eisenhower matrix or some other method. But the one that I prefer and I really encourage you to try is from Gary Keller's book, The One Thing, where you ask yourself, what is the one thing you can do such that by doing it, it will make everything else easier or unnecessary? What are the tasks you can do that's going to take a load off, it's gonna make you feel lighter, and it's going to have a positive effect on all the other tasks that you have on your plate. So for example, for this trip that I have to go on. I would love to research the best restaurants in town to try, make sure I have good meals, but is that critical? No, I can probably just look up Google Maps on the fly. Downloading movies for the plane, there's movies on the plane, maybe it's not the best selection, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Giving my friend key to water the plants, I'm sure they're gonna survive for a few days. You know, packing for the trip, I think if I do that, I'll definitely feel a lot more prepared and a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as a goal. So see this little circle icon? and it's gonna highlight it for me. We're gonna sort this by priority so that all the ones that I'm marking float to the top. Follow up about room upgrade. It's nice to have, but I can just do that when I get there. If not, normal room is totally fine. Planning meals for the week and grocery shopping. These both would make my life a lot easier because if I plan the meals, it makes the grocery shopping easier. I spend less money, I'm more focused. And then if I do the grocery shopping, that means my entire week I get to have home cooked meals, I'm probably gonna spend hundreds of dollars less on takeout than if I didn't do it and be much healthier. So this actually has a lot of downstream benefits. And I'm gonna mark both of these as a priority. I do need to sort through my expenses before doing my taxes, but I think scheduling my appointment first is probably more critical because slots are filling up. And once I have that, it'll be a reminder to do my expenses, even if it's just the night before. So I'm gonna mark that as well. Sending an invoice to a sponsor. Sooner I do this, the sooner I get paid. So that is definitely a very big task that needs to get done. Paying rent, if I do this, I have a place to live. So that's pretty nice. I should probably mark that as a priority. So right now, let's see, I have six and let me mark one more. I love my mom, but I think she'll forgive me if I don't call her this week. I do need to film this video because I have a deadline for it. So I think if I were to do that, I will feel a lot less stressed. So right now we have our seven top tasks and I want you to click on this, press shift, go down to the bottom of the list and we're gonna right click and say someday. So now if we go up to this panel and click on someday, you can still see all your tasks that you just moved. They're here if you need to reference them, if you wanna tackle them later, but they're not in our inbox assaulting our brain cells. Now that you have your seven most important tasks, I want you to schedule one task per day for the next week. And we're actually gonna time block into our calendar so we know exactly how much time we plan to do it for. Today is Sunday, tomorrow is the first, which means I should probably pay rent today. We're gonna put that down here, maybe after I eat dinner. Monday, I have lunch with a friend, but I think I will have time to plan my meals maybe sometime when I get home after. And then once I have my meals planned, the next day, I'm gonna schedule like an hour and a half of grocery shopping after lunch. Make sure I'm not too hungry when I go. I would really like to film this video and not feel stressed about it. So I'm gonna put that for the afternoon. I have east facing windows. So this will be when the sun is not directly shining in my face. And this is probably gonna take me like a good hour and a half. The next day I wanna schedule my tax appointment because I need to make sure that I don't miss that deadline. The following day, I think in the morning or maybe after lunch, I'll tell myself to send the invoice to that sponsor. And then finally on Saturday, I'm going to pack for the trip because I leave on Monday. So I'll give that to myself maybe in the evening. And let's give myself like two hours for that because sometimes packing takes a really long time. Okay, perfect. Now we have a very simple, very achievable action plan for the following week. And if you followed the framework from earlier and you were diligent about making sure that these are only tasks that are gonna really make yourself feel less stressed, lighter, make life a little bit easier, then you should be making some pretty decent progress in only a week's time. And before we finish this, we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna go over here to projects. I'm gonna say add project. And here we're gonna list our three biggest projects, goals, anything you wanna do that's kind of a bigger initiative versus a single task. Just pick three that you really wanna focus on. So for example, mine might be wedding planning. That's a pretty big bucket in itself. And then we're gonna create another one. I'm gonna say this is YouTube channel, let's say Notion Build. 
So building a new template in Notion. And now we're gonna go and create three tasks under each of these projects that we know we can currently do right now. They're not being blocked, there's no holds on them. We're not gonna do them now, but when we have the capacity to, we can get around to it. For wedding planning, the next three steps, email, venues I'm interested in, photographers, visit a dress store. Next things I wanna do for my YouTube channel, maybe create a new banner, organize videos and playlists, and brainstorm content Q2. Watch Wesley Anna's newest video about building in Notion. Subscribe to Wesley Anna. Write a list of databases I want to build. Great, now we have in our inbox a list of nine different tasks that we can choose from that we know are gonna propel our key projects and our most critical goals forward when we have time to do them in the future. Now remember, we're not planning anything additional. We have our seven tasks that we've already committed to. This is just your reset week. We're not adding anything else. I know it can be really tempting to put more things on your plate, but you're gonna end up in the same situation as what got you to click on this video in the first place. So please resist. And as you're going through this week and you're checking off your tasks of the day, if something comes up, if you think of a new task that you wanna write down, you can always come back here, just write in your inbox. I knew cups, I don't know, anything that comes to mind. Put it here, any integrations you have, again, if you connect it to Notion, if you add tasks in there, or if there's new work tasks that come up from somewhere else, they're gonna automatically populate in here. When you're finished the reset week and you're ready to plan new weeks, all you have to do is go into daily planning and you're gonna say review today. And now we can see a list of all of our tasks in the inbox that we've put in from our projects, anything that's been automatically imported throughout the week. And if you really want, you can also go back into that someday list for all the tasks that we decided weren't a priority for the previous week. But I would suggest prioritizing what is in the inbox because these are gonna be, number one, all the tasks that are moving along your important projects and goals. And it's gonna be stuff that came up in the previous week. So it's stuff that's more urgent, more time sensitive versus tasks that are already in the past. And each day you're just gonna schedule one up to three tasks at most into your day and time block it out. Give yourself both the space and time to do it and also time box yourself so it doesn't take too long. So over time, as you go through this process, you should start to make slow but steady progress. You won't be doing everything you wanna do and there might be things that still fall through the cracks, but as you gain confidence and feel more comfortable increasing your workload, you'll naturally start to incorporate what is truly important or urgent. Thank you again to Occuflow for sponsoring this video. If you wanna give them a try, you can check them out using the link provided in the description below. And what we've covered today is really just a small slice of what this app has to offer. So if you want to learn more about how I use Occuflow in my own workflows, I suggest you check out this video next.